to be here and I love the little straw poll that um, Esther, is it from Incubator, um, gave earlier as well as Stefan because it's great to know who we're speaking to here. Uh, I'm really interested to see as we're following on from Craig's remarks, there is a difference when we talk about small businesses and tech-enabled startups that are aiming for high growth over a very short period of time. So just keeping that context in mind, some of the remarks that I will be sharing with you today and the suggestions on how I can show you the money will be specific to tech-enabled startups and some of them will be applicable to all small businesses. So to kick off, just a little bit about Blue Chili. Uh, as mentioned, we help startup founders to build products, gain pilots with customers to secure investment and to establish the first team. So the job of, us, uh, of an entrepreneur and when you first have an idea and really aligns well with Jan's uh, four C's that she spoke about, it's these four things that you need to do in order to get that traction and to be able to really grow and bring your idea to market. And Blue Chili has evolved over the years. Uh, we've been around about six years. We started working individually with entrepreneurs. Uh, we've expanded into corporate programs and most recently we run uh, sort of open innovation programs focused on a specific challenge. Uh, she Starts focuses on addressing diversity in the tech sector and so we support female founders in that accelerator program and City Connect which I run uh, focuses on addressing urban challenges so around the sort of smart city space. Just go back. Um, but I haven't always been in this space, and as Stefan mentioned, I come from a background in, in government and in think tanks, and really what drives me, what I'm really passionate about, is how are we going to transition to the new economy? And if I think about this, and I think about all these disruptive technologies out there, I'm sometimes a little bit afraid that we're a bit complacent, and a lot of us are still in sort of salaried roles that are not going to be able to adapt to that disruption. So I'm really excited by this topic that Jan brought together because I do think that there is an important discussion to be had as to how we can all explore new ideas, become an entrepreneur and learn from that experience. So in terms of outlining the options available to you to uh, receive money, to get money, to be able to take your idea to market. I'm going to outline three options and these are mutually exclusive and I'm going to walk through sort of bootstrapping your idea, accelerating your idea or whether you raise funding and for most people they'll do a little combination of both of, of all of these. And fourthly, I'll share an idea, what I think is less optional which is really quite important is that you build your community and it's fantastic that Jan's going to have after this about building a community of practice for entrepreneurs, which I didn't know, which is fantastic. And it ties in so well because I think this is a critical part about socialising your idea, being able to bring it to market. And even if you've already got underway, building your community is essential. And I'll show a few ways how you might wish to do that. So when it comes down to the different options available to you, there is a challenge here and a fundamental sort of balancing act between time and money and that money is often termed in, in terms of ownership of your idea and if you want to make something if you want to take your idea to market quickly you may have to give up some of that equity in your business you may I have to pay to do that and so that's an initial thing to outline if you have the time to really work on that idea for a long time, you may be able to uh, um, maintain 100% ownership of that business. And if it's not a time sensitive idea, it, that might be fine. But in many cases, and if it is a tech enabled business, there is a time and you're against the clock and you want to get it out quickly, in which case you're going to have to make that trade off. So the first item, bootstrapping, and that's really very appealing to many people. It does mean that you need to really focus on pursuing customers and profitability from day one and for some business ideas that's not always possible. But there's a number of ways you can do it and some of the biggest 
tech companies out there have in fact bootstrapped for many years before they receive multiple millions um, in investment. Uh, companies such as GitHub, uh, GoPro, um, in Australia, Australia's greats at Lassie and 99 designs all uh, bootstrapped for a certain number of years before going for investment. And that might come from savings, your own savings, that might come from uh, maintaining a full-time job while you try to uh, nurture this idea. It might come from government grants, which is fantastic, Anna will be speaking about some of the government grants that are available out there. Might come from bank loans, but as Craig indicated, that's pretty tough if you don't have bricks and mortar. In fact, most times, and in the startup world, that will mostly be credit card debt. So you're starting to <laughs> seep away a little bit at the ownership when you start to get credit card debt and those sort of things. And the last one, friends, family, and fools. These are people who just love what you're doing. They believe you, they'll follow you, they'll, they'll give you money on pretty relaxed terms and they'll really hope that it works out for you. But if it doesn't, they're probably not going to really um, hound you necessarily. So it's a, it's a, that's a great option as well if it's available to you. And this is the sort of bootstrapping element that may be right for you for a certain period of time. The next option is around accelerating that idea. And this is where you start to say, you know what, I don't, I don't have three years to work on this. I don't have um, a number of years to sort of get this right. Or I don't have time to do it on the side of a full-time job. I need to just be all in. And when you want to be all in or, or mostly in or half in, um, it, this is when some of these accelerator programs are quite appropriate. Um, but it is very important to note that there are now about 70 different accelerator programs operating in Australia. And this is a fantastic thing for the ecosystem because this means we've matured. We've got specialised programs and so you've got lots of opportunity to choose the one that's just right for you. And I'd sort of say there's four areas where they differ. So some programs are fee for service, so you pay to participate in the program. Except, of course, the incubator one, which is free, which is fantastic. Um, and some of them then will add on uh, programs after that, and, and they're usually on a fee-for-service basis. Other uh, accelerated programs work on an equity basis, and therefore they'll take a percentage of your, uh, of your business in return for an, um, a, an investment probably around twenty-five to 50000 is is normal. The second uh, sort of variable in these sort of accelerated programs, it may be in person, it may be virtual. And this matters depending on your family circumstances, whether you really have the time to be in a particular city for these programs or if you want to do it um, more remotely. Um, the stage of your idea, we uh, just had a meeting this morning with 10 different accelerators from across Sydney and we all talked about the stage of the idea that we work with and everything from early stage, back of the napkin kind of idea, all the way through to someone has a minimal viable product, the tech product, all the way through to they've got customers and they, and they may, may already have sought some investment. And the last one is accelerators can be light touch or they can be very hands-on. So thinking about these four variables, just to give an example of how one operates, and this is probably on the a bit of an extreme end. I can share kind of the details for City Connect. Um, very hands-on. We build the tech product for the entrepreneur. We um, so wrap a tech team around them for three months and they build a minimal viable product. And then at the end of six months, we put the founder in front of investors to raise investment. We put them in front of customers. And uh, in terms of in-person or virtual, it's a combination. We have about seven contact days over six months, and the rest of the time is uh, virtual. And those contact days are done in Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne because our programs are national. And uh, we provide 25,000 in cash at the beginning of the program, and we take 15% equity, which is 5% for the 25,000, and 10% equity to build the product. Uh, and the stage of the idea is back of the napkin, kind of early idea stage. So quite high risk in that regard. So that's just one model. 
and there is everything in between. And I, I guess one of the things with this sort of, if you do choose to accelerate your idea, there are going to be lots of options available to you. And in the ecosystem, there are a lot of people that are really keen to make sure people find the right one for them because, you know, it is all about making sure that entrepreneurs are a su success. Finally, fundraising. And probably um, some of you might think this is all about show me the money is really about this fundraising aspect and we hear a lot about crowdfunding, angel investors, venture capital and really this is a very important step but it's also really, really, really hard and so if this is the stage you're up to, what we say to the um, founders in Blue Chile, we say to them that, you know, make sure you're ready. Are you ready for this because you need to have sort of your books in order ready to be really interrogated by these potential investors and you also need to be at the right stage to maximise the value of your company. So crowdfunding obviously is expanding and a great opportunity to gain customers if you go sort of like the Kickstarter route or if you're doing equity crowdfunding there's also another alternative there. Angel investors, family offices, venture capital, lots of different options you can go for. I think one of the things is, and if this is a topic that interests you, I can tell you about some upcoming events that are focused specifically on this. It's important to note that there are a lot of intermediaries in this space, and again, you start to pay for um, the services. So the intermediaries may be a platform which introduce you to angel investors or introduce you to different uh, investors, or they may be a hands-on kind of uh, service which uh, helps you be ready to raise capital. Uh, yeah, lots of, lots of stuff on this and I'd be happy to share those uh, upcoming event details with you. Finally, the thing that I'm really passionate about is um, finding your tribe, building a community to help you bring this idea to life. And, you know, we've got the uh, Riverside Business Chamber, there's so many chambers and, and organisations, but really finding what works for you and what works for your needs at a particular time. These are some of the options that are really great for startups. And I guess, um, in fact, uh, Jan, you preempted what I was going to say by having Esther speak about the incubator because I think it's a fantastic addition for those that are in the right area. Not only a great building, but a great program. Um, the North Sydney Innovation Network, a really fantastic um, network. Uh, the person running that, John O'Herman, has really done a lot of work to get the North Sydney Innovation Network, get the events north of the bridge, uh, startup events north of the bridge, and he's um, built a really great group there. And Spark Festival, another opportunity. This is in late October, October 19 to November 2nd. There are over a hundred events during those two weeks and I guarantee there would be something of interest. If you're interested in this topic, there will be something of interest to you in that event and that's a really fantastic opportunity. On the left, I've got a bit of a list. It was quite fun to um, search on meetups and um, for tech events, tech meetups in Sydney. There are over 200 active meetups around specific tech topics. So if you're into big data or Python or augmented reality, there will be a meetup for you. And that really allows you to explore that particular technical um, field that you might need. Hackathons, I believe, are a great way to socialise your idea. Many people will say, I don't want to share my idea in case someone takes it. Um, and I would say an idea is really just an idea until it finds a home and someone executes on it. So there will be very few pitches that we hear at Blue Chili that we have not heard before. So that's, their ideas are cheap, it's the execution that really makes them. So hackathons are a great place to socialise your idea and um, definitely MPID, Macquarie Park Innovation District, has done a lot of work around trying to bring the community together here and held a great hackathon last year, two last year in fact, and you know they're great opportunities if you're in the area to be able to, um, to expand and, and to socialise that idea and really take it to the next level. 
So I'll leave those options with you. Really see that to take, to get the money, if I was to show you the money, it's going to be a combination of those three things up the top that you really need to do. And then definitely take the time to build your community, find your tribe so that you can really um, have people surrounding you as you take this. It's not easy as um, we'll hear from Ed about his journey, um, but it, it helps to be surrounded by support. Thanks very much.